Good Friday, everyone, and welcome to this edition of Conversations Daily News. I'm your host, Cyrus Webb. Glad you all could join us once again. We, of course, have your news headlines coming up on this Friday. We have the Truth of the Day with Mary Ellen Zaganovich. And in today's entertainment spotlight, you've been part of my conversation with Dr. Cindy Blanco, talking about the benefits of Duolingo when it comes to learning a new language. Enjoy today's broadcast. For Conversations Daily News, I'm Cyrus Webb with your Friday headlines in international news. 12 U.S. service members among 72 people killed in Kabul airport attack. Two suicide bombers and gunmen attacked crowds of Afghans flocking to Kabul's airport Thursday, transforming a scene of desperation into one of horror in the waning days of an airlift for those fleeing the Taliban takeover. At least 72 people were killed and 143 wounded, according to U.S. and Afghan officials. The dead include 11 Marines and one Navy medic, according to two U.S. officials. They said another 15 service members were wounded and warned the toll could grow. One of the bombers struck people standing knee-deep in a wastewater canal under the sweltering sun, throwing bodies into the fetid water. Those who moments earlier had hoped to get on flights out could be seen carrying the wounded to ambulances in a daze, their own clothes darkened with blood. A U.S. official said the complex attacks was believed to have been carried out by the Islamic State group. The ISIS affiliate in Afghanistan is far more radical than the Taliban, who recently took control of the country in a lightning blitz and condemned the attack. Western officials had warned of a major attack, urging people to leave the airport, but that advice went largely unheeded by Afghans desperate to escape the country in the last days of an American-led evacuation before the U.S. officially ends its 20-year presence on August 31st. Already, some countries have ended their evacuations and begun to withdraw their soldiers and diplomats, signaling the beginning of the end of one of history's largest airlifts. The Taliban have insisted foreign troops must be out by America's self-imposed deadline of August 31st, and the evacuations must end then, too. In Washington, U.S. President Joe Biden spent much of the morning in a secure White House Situation Room where he was briefed on the explosions and conferred with his national security team and commanders on the ground in Kabul. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin released a statement mourning the loss of U.S. service members in the attack, saying, We mourn their loss, we will treat their wounds, and we will support their families in what will most assuredly be devastating grief. In a related story, U.S. proceeding with Kabul pullout despite deadly ISIS attacks. President Joe Biden is pressing ahead with the evacuation of Americans and others from Afghanistan after attacks that killed at least 12 U.S. service members and dashed hopes of ending the 20-year U.S. war without further bloodshed. As many as 1,000 Americans and many more Afghans are still struggling to get out of Kabul. Biden was briefed on the attacks, which also killed dozens of Afghans, and came 12 days into the rush evacuation and five days before its scheduled completion. Some Republicans argued to extend the evacuation beyond next Tuesday's deadline. The U.S. general overseeing the evacuation, General Frank McKenzie, said after the attacks, If we find who is associated with this, we will go after them. He said it would be a mistake for the U.S. to call an early end to the evacuation, despite the risk. Thursday's attacks were sure to intensify political pressure from all sides on Biden, who already was under heavy criticism for not beginning the pullout earlier. In more national news, 100,000 more COVID deaths seen unless U.S. changes its ways. The U.S. is projected to see nearly 100,000 more COVID-19 deaths between now and December 1st, according to the nation's most closely watched forecasting model. But health experts say that toll could be cut in half if nearly everyone wore a mask in public places. In other words, what the coronavirus has in store this fall depends on human behavior. Behavior is really going to determine if, when, and how sustainably the current wave subsides said the director of the University of Texas COVID-19 Modeling Consortium. In entertainment news, music industry weighs vaccine mandates, but politics collide. The coronavirus vaccine gave the live entertainment industry hope for a rebound in 2021. Now as COVID-19 cases surge and hospital beds fill up, it feels like March 2020 all over again. In hope of salvaging and surviving another devastating year, the industry is moving rapidly towards vaccine mandates for concert goers, event staff, and crew. In some instances, fans are being asked to show proof of vaccination or a negative test, such as for Harry Styles' upcoming fall U.S. tour. And finally in business news, stocks fall after Kabul bombing. Traders also wait for Fed. 
technology and communication companies led a broad sell-off on Wall Street Thursday following the deadly suicide attacks at the Kabul airport in Afghanistan. The S&P 500 fell 0.6% a day after capping a five-day winning streak with an all-time high. The Dow Jones Industrial Average fell 0.5%, while the Nasdaq Composite lost 0.6%. Despite the losses, the three major indexes are on track for weekly gains. Cyrus Webb, Conversations Daily News. It's now time for the Truth of the Day with Mary Ellen Tagamich. Mary Ellen, take it away. Hi, this is Mary Ellen with your Truth of the Day. Become successful. Get out of your own way. It is amazing how often you can get in your own way without even being aware of what you are doing. You think you want to succeed, yet there are so many reasons why you may want to block your own efforts. It may be subconsciously you are afraid to succeed, so you keep reason, You create reasons to keep yourself stuck. It may be you make your goals so difficult that no one could ever achieve them, or you approach your goals in a way that it keeps creating the same results over and over again. If you believe you're standing in your own way, take out a piece of paper and record your progress so far. Write down all the choices you made your efforts, any fears that may have prompted your decisions to keep you stuck. Honestly look at what you wrote down, and next time, choose differently. Today, face any obstacles that are blocking you. Let go and find success as you go about to enjoy the day. Dr. Cindy Blanco is featuring today's Entertainment Spotlight. We're here on Conversation Daily News. For Conversation Daily News, I'm Severus Webb with the Entertainment Spotlight. Dr. Cindy Blanco joined me recently on Conversations Live, the radio show, to talk about how people young and old can use Duolingo to be able to learn a new language right from their homes. Here's a bit of that conversation. I remember when I was in school, which was now a long time ago, Dr. Blanco, you know, that is one of the things that we that we looked forward to being able to do, to be able to start to learn a new language. But I think, you know, for a lot of people today, it doesn't have to be something that's difficult to learn a new language, even as you get older. Yeah, absolutely. I think you're right that we think of this as being something that we study in school when we're young. Um, and I think the real challenge for adults learning a language is to find time in our schedules to, to build a good study habit, you know, we have obligations, <laughs> and, you know, there's a right. lot going on for, for adults, and so the real challenge isn't so much, you know, are our brains ready, is this something that I can still do, it's more finding ways to build language study into our routine. Such a great point. So what are the benefits, uh, Dr. Blanco, to learning a new language now? Yeah, so certainly the most obvious benefit is being able to communicate in a new language, but today I'd like to focus on the social and cognitive benefits of, of language learning. You know, as you mentioned, language is inherently social. It's a way that we connect with the people and cultures that we care about. And that could be something that's really personally meaningful if you are if you have family members who speak other languages or if you're interested in your family's history. Um, but there are also ways that we can think of, of building connections through language study by, like, studying together as a family or in a, a group of friends. That so that's really great for motivation, and it gives you uh, people to practice with. Uh, and there's lots of cognitive benefits as well. So, so we know from research that after just a few months of language study that we see structural changes in our brain in response to learning a new language. And this can be especially important as we age. Cyrus Webb, Conversation Daily News. We thank you all for tuning in to this edition of Conversation Daily News. Provided you guys on Monday with more news, Truth of the Day with Mary Ellen Taganovich, and of course your entertainment spotlight. Until then, I'm your host Cyrus Webb saying as always, enjoy your day, enjoy your life, enjoy your world. Thank you all for choosing Conversation Daily News today. Let's make it a great one.